I don't know if I told you the way that I vomited in his front yard. <gasps> Did I no. tell you guys this? It was just an emotional vomit. Yeah, like literally I walked up to his place and he was leaving his house with a girl <gasps> and we hadn't talked in seven days. And it was just like a visceral response. It, I, you were just I like, thought it oh. only happened in the movies, like in comedy, scene, comedy scenes that's, where someone's completely that's literally fine. written out of a comedy movie. Are you ready? Yep, let's go home. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's a chance to feel grounded, to gain tools to manage everything that's going on. Whether it's stress about the holidays, anxiety about the new year, or just needing someone to talk to, BetterHelp is there. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited for your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional cost. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash WT9 to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash WT9. You know how much our pups mean to Jeremy and I, and we would do absolutely anything to make sure that they are always feeling their best. And that is why we love Medterra CBD pet products. They have their CBD drops that come in beef, chicken, and unflavored, and are made with high quality human grade CBD isolate combined with organic MCT oil. Pup arthritis, we've got something for you. Bacon. Now, all you have to do is go to the link in our bio and Medterra is letting you try it free. Yes, you heard that right. Get a free $40 product to try try and just pay for shipping. Give your pet the gift of health and happiness this holiday season. This is so fun. <laughs> Welcome back to Wild <laughs> We have kicked Jeremy off of the podcast this week and it is <laughs> Girls Only Girls Night. Night. <laughs> My preferred way of being at your house. Yes. Uh, <laughs> dogs, snacks, girls. girls. Exactly. So today we've got Maggie Bustamante Cornfeld, who is yeah. a newly, a whole ass wife. Newly. I feel like this is old news, but thank you. Yeah, old news, <laughs> but like since you've been on the podcast, now oh, you have true. a whole ass husband. She just answered the phone yeah. and she was like, let me tell my husband and to come oh, oh, and all three. <laughs> That's what I was like. I, I feel like, like I have never heard you say that and I've never heard him call you his wife. Why? Yeah. I know. It's I hang out with him every week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like when I say that, I really age myself, but. No, it's okay. you're still baby. You're still baby. I, it, yeah. And you're then also, a whole ass wait, wife wait, too. wait, let me introduce you. The other, oh, so the sorry. other talking voice for our <laughs> audio listeners is Kelsey Adara, Hello. who is now also newly single. So we've got T to talk. Back from yeah. breakup boot camp. Oh my God. I went to a literal breakup boot camp, y'all, this How weekend. Was that? It was life changing. Hmm. People are screaming with this accent. I know. They're I was like, going to say, guys, I can't get on board with this. I'm so sorry. I love you, but I can't get on board. Are you normal or do you also break out into a unhinged British accent. You know what, if I had the um, opportunity, uh, as in like, if I could do it, I probably would, but I think it's better that I can't. I don't think I've ever heard you do any accent. She's Just Canadian. Because I can. she, mm. are, she already has an accent. I come with one built in. Yes. Mm-hmm, 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 uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got the girlies, the girly pops today Yay. for the pod. And I'm so excited. Jeremy is home in Rockford, Illinois Gotta this weekend. It. And uh, to be honest, I'm enjoying my alone time. Have you? <sighs> yeah. What's your favorite part about him being gone? Um, I can burn any candle without <laughs> any feedback. Sorry, what? Is this burn something? any candle. I thought you were going to be like, you know, I've been farting a lot recently. <laughs> candle? No, he was complaining last last week that my Christmas candle was a little too Christmassy. He was like, I think you're going to freak people out. No. That's like one, that doesn't exist. There's no such thing as too Christmassy. Yeah, no. And so now I'm just like burning every candle being like, la, 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 la. It's Christmas time is here. And you know what? Like to his credit, he really like, I started decorating November 1st. And so he really has welcomed that with open wow. arms. Honestly, but this is the first year that I've had a tree. And honestly, it's cured a lot of my like- Seasonal? S- well, mm-hmm. it gets dark at 4 p.m. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I was like, you know what? I'm gonna get a Christmas tree. And I it's, turned, spar- yes. it's something sprinkly and sparkly exactly. that brings up your mood. I, I support keeping this tree in the house until like February. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I mm-hmm. have three trees. Rosanna has six. And so <gasps> I'm aspiring to be like Rosanna Pansino. That's six? With six Christmas trees. I'm trying to be in the tax bracket that allows the space <laughs> for six trees. Oh, yes. Because that ain't really fucking normal. Right. Six Christmas trees, seven bathrooms, yes, 14 exactly. bedrooms. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. And a partridge in a pet tree. I saw a meme today that was like, Yo, you ever thought about that song? It's all birds. I just <laughs> had this conversation. <laughs> Turtle doves, partridge in a pear tree. And then you're like, on the fifth day, oh, French thank hens? God. Five Wait. golden rings, and then bam! Five golden rings. Seven geese. Oh. Six, no, six, six geese, geese. a laying. Seven. <laughs> <laughs> 
point is that motherfucker loves birds. Hella birds. So many birds. Imagine I literally just had lover. this conversation. And you're and like, dude, stop we giving me talk. fucking birds. You guys don't like birds? Not no, that many. 25 of them. I don't have a farm. Birds are cool guys. I agree, <laughs> but not in those quantities. Okay. There's so many birds. Too give many me a birds. puppy. Give me a puppy and give me the, the, the gold <gasps> rings. You should rewrite it, Laura. And do oh my dog God, breeds. We, we should, we, no, we should do ours, what we want for our days of Christmas. Oh my God, Ooh. do it. Girlies day of Christmas, yeah, like girl that's man. A, yeah, exactly. Wait, this could be a viral fucking bop. <laughs> On the first yeah, that's got legs. Day of that's got legs. I do like, it would have to be on the first day of holidays. First of all, we, we, we're rewriting to be mm, more mm, right, to be more twenty twenty three. Yeah, I love that. Wow. Um, I want to talk about breakup boot camp. <gasps> yeah, it was. I like I Paint can't scene. put into words how unreal it was. It was based on Amy Chan. She's kind of the breakup coach of okay. the world. She's like okay. number one best breakup queen there is, which is so funny because it's not a love coach or a dating coach. Mm -hmm. okay. It's a breakup coach. So is it more around like self-esteem and like that kind of angle? It's almost like all of it, right? It's four days in the woods, but luxury. Right, okay, so like glamping. More than glamping, less than a hotel. Four seasons. Yes. Somewhere in between. Yeah, you could scream, no one would hear you. Okay, mm. um, but you have, you're still using, like the Dyson air wraps are still out. They're still out, but our <laughs> phones are in a cute little basket. Like we're not, okay, got it, we're got it, unplugged, got it. but our, our Dysons right, are plugged. Right. Do you know what yes, I mean? Yes, okay. yes, yes. So yes. like day one is really about like training the nervous system and they bring in all different mm. kinds of scientists and teachers. And like we had a dominatrix come one day. <gasps> Damn. And like each day is themed differently to help Help people and there was uh, men, women, non-binary folk from the youngest person in our group was 24, oldest was in her 60s. So people that had been married for 30, more than right. I've been alive. Literally. Okay. And then people who had like been really unlucky with the last like three relationship or situationships. Mm. Like it was all versions of, and I mean everything from like domestic violence to we share children mm. or like just crazy situations. Mm. And you basically realize by like day three that it's a total bait and switch. Like you're thinking you're going to break up boot camp to like get over your ex, but what you're really going for is to like empower the fucking shit out of yourself. Like that's what I was thinking is that like you end up leaving feeling good about you and it doesn't even uh, matter who you, who like left you truly. or you left. Mm. And there's a process to that because you want to get it out. You want to like right. dump your story on these anyone. people. Literally yeah. anyone. <laughs> anyone be like, break up. help me. And yeah. You learn, like uh, the things I learned the first night being there, I would have been like, I could leave and be completely satisfied. So you My think life it really does changed. like expedite the process. Not only expedites, but I now feel like I can teach and empower other people wow. to like get through a breakup. Like I'll know what to say next time someone's going through a breakup, which let's be real, right. it's probably going to be me. <laughs> yeah. I'm looking around the room. The numbers aren't great in my favor. The, the, the math uh, is math. -ing. The math is math. Girl math uh, is real there. Um, but it was just like, we did a burning letter ceremony one night. That's where very Burning Man. We were all wearing white and we were we took a sacred vow of silence. So none of us talked, but we were all just like standing there sobbing in front of this huge oh massive oh fireplace. Like it was prolific. Like I looked around, I'll never forget. I looked at each person individually in the eye and was like, heartbreak does not discriminate. Right. Mm, it does right, not give right. a fuck yeah. your age, your race, yeah. your tax bracket. Yeah. No, nope. every single person had a different story, but we were all standing here bearing our souls to each other mm -hmm. of this hurt. Mm. And like somehow I was like, is this trauma bonding? Am I healed? Oh, this is trauma, trauma bonding. Trauma bonding for yeah. sure. But it works because, so you do work on like your actual ex, but yeah. it's really like, how do you get over the shame and the guilt of maybe staying or being with this person that you look back and you're like, why would I do that? Mm -hmm. And then you get to the fun stuff by the last day where she brings in the dominatrix and like, she teaches you how to step into your power and like use dom techniques outside of the bedroom to get what you want. And then there's like a little dating class because some people haven't dated since like before the internet. Oh my God, well that oh, one lady yeah. who was in yeah. her 60s like probably doesn't know what a hinge is. Oh fuck no, what she a was like, is. will you guys help me? And we we're like, say less, give us oh, your phone. Yeah, oh my cute. God. But like there's even a class on just now moving forward, how do you level up your right. fucking standards, mm -hmm. your um, non-negotiables, like how do you not repeat patterns? Yep. And you guys, the fucking craziest part mm -hmm. was Amy, the woman who runs it, who wrote the book said, 
she was like, I'm, this is not scientific. This is just some woo woo universe shit that I made up. <laughs> and I was like, that's me. And she was like, I call it the dangle because every time boot camp is over in like, whether it's a day, a week, a month, the universe is going to dangle something in front of you. <gasps> and it's going to be a, a thing, a pattern, a person, your ex is oh, like going to come out. Of, oh, yes. okay. And when I tell you as soon as this camp was over, oh, we all got our phones back out of the baskets. We turned it on like four people. <gasps> had dangles. Had dangles from like one guy hadn't heard from his girl in four years. Shut the fuck one up. One girl had like left a situation and it was like for sure over. Like he was never coming back. And he <gasps> had written this long fucking heart emoji <gasps> sending oh picture. And we were all like, resist the dangle! Resist the dangle! <laughs> and I don't think had we not all been like collectively there to yeah. help them through it. Yeah. Like we... It was just, it was wild. It was a human psychological experiment. I had an amazing time. I recommend it to anyone and everyone going yeah, through Yeah, I feel like community is so important. Like obviously and you have healing. us as yeah. your friends, but like- mm. I can't burn someone, you guys with this all the time. I don't want you, I don't want you to think <laughs> of it as a not burden. A burden. I know, yeah. I feel like no, you said that. But yeah, I understand that when you say it, but- I cannot screenshot every text message to yeah, you yeah, again yeah, yeah. for like a month straight <laughs> and like call you crying yeah. and like, I just can't, I, I can't do that as a person. I have to figure out how to self-soothe yeah. and like yeah. self-regulate and mm -hmm. step into my power. And I feel like I learned a yeah. little bit. And someone who's just done a mental health retreat yes, and you had just attending it. Mm -hmm. This is just... So I'm, refreshing. I'm in my retreat. Maggie's era. a podcaster. I Literally, know. last time you came on the podcast, I feel like you were so shy. And now this bitch has a podcast. She's like, and now tell me about your <laughs> retreat. <laughs> segway, segway. <laughs> We've talked about me so much. Go to you. What's going on with me lately? Maggie? Amazing. Maggie, you had the most fun wedding that I've ever been to. It was Thank you so incredible. Much. It was the biggest disco ball. Oh. It was so much fun. Cute. It was absolutely beautiful. I sobbed the hardest that I've ever cried at any wedding. She cried oh. a lot. I was so kind of surprised. I was like, Jesus, I thought I knew Lauren. This is a new feature. Hey, listen so to, okay, we this have- updated, we This updated, this updated um, feature. <laughs> A recorded voicemail uh, guest book because we just like like listening to people's like voices and like what they have to say. And Lauren had to say, Lauren had two separate voicemails where she was like, "Okay, I'm crying. I gotta go." <laughs> and I handed the phone to Jeremy. I think Jeremy and I have talked about this because we're also gonna do the. It's called I think Hold the Phone. There's a few. Uh, there's um, there's a few different companies. We did. Uh, God, I know I can't remember the names. Basically, they give you like the rotary phone, and uh -huh. so it, you just pick it up and you leave a message, and they cut it all together so you can listen Cute. to the messages. Because like every wedding I've ever been to that has a guest book, I feel like people take the pen with their shitty ass writing, uh -huh. and they're like, and "Oh they're fuck, like, what do I say?" Congratulations, love you, so happy to be here, yeah. XOXO, Lauren and Jeremy. Where it's like this, it's so much funnier now that you have yeah. two failed messages from me that are yes. <laughs> that are just so like little tipsy in the, yeah. the history books for no, ceremony I was sober I was sober oh, yeah, crying no. in the ceremony yeah it, that was surprising I like well heard was, her before I saw it and I was like what the fuck is wrong with her but you told me you were a crier I, I didn't know. believe it I'm a wedding crier oh. are you like a, a an empathy crier or like a cry passenger if you see someone else crying you cry no no no, no it's just you love love yeah I just love it I, just yeah. love, I love Zaggy I will sob yours too love yeah we're gonna be on Hinged. Jeremy said that he started writing his vows. <gasps> wow. Isn't that crazy? I applaud him. Well, I don't know. It's it's happening. Well, yeah, but like, I, I feel like people write their vows like within like the week leading up to it. Sometimes like oh, the day of. No fucking way. I, if, You're performers. Yeah. You have to Don't be, is that guy it. Wrote, wrote ours on the plane there just because we had so much shit leading up to it. Yeah. But that was not the original plan. I think Your we had initially- so cute. Thank you. Your vows were great. We and originally were like, we're gonna work on this for like a month. Yeah. That's like what I, that's like how I envision it happening is like <laughs> the month leading or up to it. Or at least me, it. not Zach. Zach's it's, just very- Is Jeremy a good writer? Um, he, he might also need time. He is, he is a good writer because his mom is a stenographer. That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean anything, but she is <laughs> incredibly like literate and uh -huh. so well-spoken. And so she, I feel like police the fuck out of uh, his writing okay. and mm. grammar and like everything in that area of expertise. Mm -hmm. So he he is a really strong writer. Like oh. I have him proofread emails every time I send something crazy. Oh, mm. good. He's really, really good at that. So his you better bring the tissues. handwriting is ass. Yes. It mm. stopped maturing after about eight 
age seven. Well, Send us a man on, who can write yeah. well. Mm. Were you about to be like, we're all on a journey? No! <laughs> <laughs> I truly do not know what I was about to say. I have a question. Yeah, what is your Who's question? Who's marrying you? <gasps> so we haven't, I don't want to say it yet because we've not asked them yet, but we okay. have a mutual friend who I think is- um, Wait, is it who I think it could be? No, no, no. Oh, I, think that you've, I think you've only met them a few, a handful of times because they're a newish friend. Oh, okay. Um, you, you should, I don't say you, you don't have to do this. But, but listen to but her. Send in, have you both send in to the person obviously yeah. that's marrying you and just let them read them. Or at least look at the length to make sure it's balanced. a good match for the yeah. vows. Yeah. That's a that's a great piece of advice. And mm -hmm. that they don't say the same jokes because if they know you both, they might know. or they may say like something that you're kind of building off of. They oh, may use in there. I see. I feel like also Jeremy and I have very different humor. I don't see us um, having overlapping jokes. I mean, <laughs> it makes sense for Keith to have that. That makes sense. Like you have yeah. the perfect. But like, how do you pit? Like, what are you thinking of when you're like, who do I want to be this? We think of someone who is a shared mutual friend who doesn't necessarily lean more on one side. Sure. But like um, what kind of, like, do they need to be good in front of crowds? Yes, they need to be yes, a leader. Yes, yes. Okay. like leader, well-spoken, confident, carries himself well, well is like not he. gonna. <gasps> Oh, it is a he, it is a he, he. it is a he. How hetero, he. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just curious. Cause like, think about people that don't have friends in the industry. Like how do no. they find someone Literally, to do this? I, I, mm. I actually told you this, Maggie, but like you having, Keith did the officiating, who was incredible. And then Eugene, like the two the most MC. like, yeah, yeah <laughs> just the most like amazing entertainers to like host your wedding yeah. was a Built dream. In. But like, you have yeah. this roster too. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, we do, we do, we do. Yeah. And so we'll see, we'll see. I don't know, I don't know, I'm nervous. What are you nervous about? It's gonna be fucking, you, bitch, shut the fuck up. <laughs> your wedding is gonna, gonna be beyond. Be you it's, it's gonna be, it's gonna be beautiful. You, you are execute, showed me. everything yeah. you've done in your me. life is uh, epic. Yeah. It's gonna be hear. great. It, you can be stressed. I'll be here for you to be stressed, but I don't want to hear shit about the day of because it's gonna be beyond. It's gonna be absolutely stunning. Like Legendary. I feel like that will for sure go without question. It's more just that like there's so much work and time mm. and effort and like oh, thought yeah. that goes into one singular day mm -hmm. that it is. It's just like kind of a lot of pressure. It's you daunting. wanted this though your whole life. Yeah, I mean, I know I've never been someone who's like, I envision myself having a crazy wedding. It's more just that like, I have, I feel like a strong, I'm drawn towards a specific aesthetic. I'm also really special. I'm so proud of you! Oh my God, it came out so naturally. I, I, think, of you, I, I think of you every time oh, I say I the words. Do you slow down now? No, well, I just did specifically uh, to tee it up for Kelsey. Cause I said, we were hanging out and I said aesthetic. And she Aesthetic. about but like fucking flung me across LA. I was just, I just went, I'm sorry. Can what the fuck did you just say? <laughs> and now I like, I'm like, no H, silent H. Silent that was H. beautiful. <laughs> it was so natural. It sounded Aesthetic. But you want to know what's something funny? The person I'm sleeping with right now is yeah. Canadian. Mm. Guess how he says it. The same way. Aesthetic. The same fucking way. No way. Aesthetic. Yeah, same way. Oh my and God. I, and I was like, I don't know how to explain this to you and it won't be funny to you, but I'm going to need you to know. You guys have said it like so that. many times that I'm forgetting how to say it now. Aesthetic. 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 There's no. F there, well, you say aesthetic. Aesthetic. S -S -S -S. aesthetic. In my mind, when I like phonetically visualize it, it's E S. Yeah, there you go. E S T. Aesthetic. aesthetic. Yeah. Yes. Anyways, very stressful. It's one of those words. Aesthetic. There's also just so many words in my vocabulary that I've like being on the podcast have learned that I pronounce just entirely wrong. And oh. so this is just on my roster of words that like give me a little, a little spike in the heartbeat, you know? Oh, yeah. you know, there's a couple of words like that for me. And I feel like- Have you like made any epitome. words up? Oh, all the time. Every day of my well, life. Give me one. <laughs> um, oh, fucking this flurp. Flurp? That flurp. Um, I- said inflammated, probably for the like <laughs> 25 years of my as life a nurse. as a nurse <laughs> and Keith, probably like year one of meeting him. He was like, um, <laughs> respect you as a person, but that's not a word. <laughs> <laughs> love you, mean it. Wait, so sorry, you. that's not oh, a word. Do you know what, what it, are you talking about? You know what my, my word, my word was is, um, I always said it's a tall tale sign. Oh, oh yeah. And yeah, Zach yeah. was like, no, so close. it's a telltale sign. Tell yeah. And yeah. I was like, no, it's a tall tale 
Like it's a tall that's, tale. Is that an idiom? I think it's categorized as an idiom maybe. I don't know. I know. I wrote a book, but don't I ask me about Wait, words. Wait, also I heard on your podcast, you pivoted the chronic. <laughs> okay, so you have a book. It's amazing. Thank you. Anyone who You're struggles with any anxiety. In my like, heart. One of the best books I've ever read. It's Thank called- um, Don't Fucking Un- Panic. Don't Fucking Panic. <laughs> and I was gonna say Unfuck Yourself, but that's another that's self-help another book, right? Yeah, that's yeah. another yeah, anxiety yeah, yeah. book. Which is um, a great title, by the way. It's so good. Yeah. But you were writing a second book on chronic pain and yep. you pivoted. I pivoted <gasps> twice, Wait, Lauren. I didn't know this. I wrote 50,000 words of the chronic pain book. How many words is a, is an average book? 50,000. <laughs> so <laughs> so you the finished book. the chronic pain book. I finished it. Couldn't stand it. Okay, hated it. I'm too close. I'm still in too much pain to be giving people advice about managing right. their chronic okay. pain. That but that sense. is chronic pain. I know. And I get that. I'll fi- I'll do it. Okay. I'll re- I'll release it. Just She's like not trying yet. to tell you, but okay. the chronic part of chronic pain means it's forever. <laughs> <laughs> I got bad news for you. It's one page. It but doesn't I, end. I understand where the pressure comes from because it yeah. is so different. Because the for- way that like the response with "Don't fucking panic," I was like, I could talk about this forever. Yeah. yeah. I'm an expert at it. I feel very confident to give advice to help mm-hmm. people. Mm-hmm. I don't feel that way about pain because it's so nuanced, and you know, being in the medical field for so long, like. Mm-hmm. It's very, I feel more scared to give people with chronic pain advice than anxiety and depression because it's so personal to each person. Mm. And so I pivoted to writing about bisexuality. The bi guide. The bi guide. Mm. I wrote, you ready for this? 24,000 words for that one. Oh my God. Put it on pause (laughs) (laughs) because I got broken up with. Oh, hang on a second. He broke up with you? Oh my God. You don't know? Do you not know this story? Wait, maybe I don't. <sighs> to finish that sentence, now I'm writing a breakup book and I'm almost done with it. And I wrote it in the last 30 days and it's my favorite thing. I'm fucking pissed. Dude, so I, yeah. I, yeah. I in what world? Lauren, join the Delulu Club because I'm still like, how? What? How did that? I was the best part of him. Okay, but I digress. Um, I basically broke up with him. I drove all of his shit to his house, dropped it off, left the keys. I said, have a nice life. I didn't hear from him. So I panicked. I went back to his house and was like, why didn't you text me? And he's like, what? You dropped all my shit off. I was like, why? What the fuck is going on? We should we make it work? Blah, 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 blah. And then he broke up with me. Got mm, it, got it, got it. Yeah. So you teed it. Okay, but wait, but what happened right before you drove all his shit? What, what caused that? We started dating the day... Jared, my ex and I of five years announced that we broken up. Yes, I, I remember. We call him sir on our okay, podcast. Great, Keep sir. his identity safe. Not that he deserves it. Um, mm-hmm. And we started dating and it went very fast, very quickly. Mm-hmm. He like moved to my side of town to be closer to me. We spent every day together. It was very microwave, very quickly. Yes. And one weekend, he pretty much like kind of fell off the face of the planet. Okay. Like we had plans. I didn't hear from him for over 24 hours. Wow. I was like, where are you? Like, hello. And then when he did finally pick up, he was like at the party we were supposed to go to together. What the fuck? And I was like, word. And then the next day I didn't hear from him Mm -hmm. till the evening. I texted him and I was like, I don't know what's going on, but like something's clearly off. I think you want space, but that's okay if you can just communicate it to me. Yeah. He said, I acknowledge something is off. I'd like to talk about it in person. I said, great. I'm going to be home tomorrow night after six. If you want to talk then. Never heard from him. Mm. Are you shitting me? I, dude, it, it was, it was like getting a rug pulled out from under This was you. over a year. Oh, yeah, 14 months. Yeah. And like, yeah. I love yous, like yeah. future trip and shit like that. And look, here's the thing. That boy had a nice dick. I really liked the sex. I knew he wasn't the one. Right. Mm. I've said it from day one. Mm-hmm. I knew he wasn't the person, mm-hmm. but I stayed. And that's why I went to break up boot camp because- when this breakup happened, I was like, it could have been anyone that did that to me. And I would have had the same Similar visceral response. reaction. Right. Yeah. And so the most fascinating thing I learned, if I can share like a yeah, small piece of, of like the breakup boot camp, that was like the most pivotal moment to mm-hmm. me is when sometimes when a breakup happens and our reaction is so much bigger than the situation itself, right? Mm-hmm. Like guys will be like, she was fucking crazy. She did crazy bitch shit. Or like you find yourself being like, I don't know why I'm crying. I, this, I don't feel like myself. Like, I don't know why I'm still so upset or like can't get over this dude. And that's what I was stuck on was like, how did I 
not confidently break it off the first time, say bye, Felice, and like leave. Mm -hmm. And this was the best thing I learned at the boot camp was in relationships, imagine it like a trip to Disneyland, right? So you want to go to Disney so bad, you buy the sweatshirt and the costume before you go, you get there early, you get the fast pass, you ride the line or you ride the ride, you get the churro, you see the parade, you buy a balloon, you see the lights, da, da, da. <laughs> you're like, at the end of the day, I've walked 20,000 steps. I did Disneyland. That was like me and Jared's five-year relationship. I went, I did all the highs. I got bitch, the sugar you rode crash. all the rides I four times. Fucking <laughs> twice, bitch. Twice I had like no pants on by the time I was leaving. <laughs> and you, you feel the cycle complete, right? Like you did Disneyland. When something like what happened to me, where it was very sudden, it was cruel, it was cold. Um, there wasn't a closure for yeah. a lot of people. That's what happens. Mm -hmm. Right. It's like being like, I'm going to Disneyland. I bought the costume. I bought the ears. I get to it. I get on one ride. I get to the very top of the ride. And then the fucking whole place burns down. Um. And they're like, you have to leave. And you're like, what? No, I, this isn't how yeah. it's supposed to go. I didn't even the ride. I collapsed out of midair. It's and unfinished. Disney's gone. I can back. never go. Give me my Give money. Give me my money back. Yeah. I've been preparing for this my whole life to have a healthy day at Disney. And, right. <laughs> and like, so that drop from the expectation of what you think the, your future is going to be like mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. one day. In my case, it was like over a couple days time being completely gone from underneath you, that drop will trigger the most secure attachment, the most actualized human. Right. Because we have at that point bonded right. in a way that our nervous systems can't handle that sudden separation. Right. Yeah. And if you remember when Jared and I were breaking up, the times that I went the most fucking feral were the days that he like, Turned off his phone, disappeared mm -hmm. to like mm -hmm. San Francisco, like yeah. did some wild yeah. shit. Yeah. And like, I learned that being a highly sensitive person, being very anxiously attached, my um, barometer for like where I'm even just starting in a relationship is already higher. And right. then you add all of this like microwave relationship, this like love bombing scenario. Mm -hmm. And then my drop is going to be so fucking long and hard. And it's built up from you know, childhood hood wounds. Mm -hmm. And right. we pick people that reinforce our wounds subconsciously as a way to try to rewrite the ending. Yes. Mm -hmm. So yes. we will yes. find people that like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to find this anxiously attached person and mm -hmm. I'm going to fix my wound. And then we don't yeah. because that's hard. And we don't do that just like without help. So knowing all of those pieces and finding that out this weekend, like literally rejuvenated my faith in myself. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, that's why this happened. Or like, mm -hmm. that's why this was so bad. Or that's why I didn't break up with him. And mm -hmm. there was just so many pieces that felt like it was missing. Yep. And what I concluded was like, yeah, it could have been anyone. There wasn't anything special about this person. It was just the timing of it. It was the, the timing, way it happened. The delivery. The timing. Yeah. Yeah. There were so many components yeah. that made it terrible for anybody. I think about yeah. even to like how this can apply to even just like um, like sudden grieving of any oh, kind. Yeah. Like if like when people lose a pet unexpectedly and it's like you haven't gone through the process yes. mentally of like starting to even, even like broach the subject yes. of unattaching mm -hmm. or like recategorizing the relationship if they're not there. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, I think that anytime you don't get to finish that cycle of like mental preparation, physical oh, yeah. preparation, whatever it might be, it's so much harder. And it's a terrible thing to say, but sometimes it's, it's easier to watch, like with Jared and I, we uncoupled for like eight months. Right, and that's right. why we were able to stay friends. It was really healing and healthy in a way. Yeah. I mean, you know, past all the bullshit. I mean, uh, you can say that now. Yeah, but, you can say that yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But even with like death, right? Like if you yeah. watch a loved one who is sick and you watch them be sicker over time and mm -hmm. it, it doesn't make it easier, but you, you're subconsciously prepared prepared, totally more prepared than a sudden yeah, yeah. shock, accident, et cetera, et cetera. Jesus. I think that's why people struggle with situationships so hard sometimes as well too, because they're yeah. not being, they're not able or capable of following through on whatever the expectation, whatever the finale Oof. of what mm -hmm. it's supposed to look like is. And it makes people go fucking crazy. Dude, it, I never thought I would do the fucking shit that I did in breakups. It was so embarrassing. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if I told you the way that I vomited in his front yard. Oh. 
<laughs> did I not no. tell you guys this? It was just an emotional vomit. Yeah, like literally I walked up to his place and he was leaving his house with a girl <gasps> and we hadn't talked in seven days. And it was just like a visceral response. It, I, you were just I like, thought it oh. only happened in the movies, like in comedy, scene, comedy scenes that's, where someone's completely that's fine. That's literally written out of a comedy movie. And then you, I was like, I didn't know vomit could travel that quickly up and out, like, bleh, like even I was shocked. I was like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> I didn't know it was possible. And that's when I was like, mm, there's something deeper here. Yeah. <laughs> there's something very so, wrong. It's like when people go do, go do like those ayahuasca trips and they vomit <laughs> all their trauma up over the span of three days. <laughs> you did oh, that always instantly yeah. in a year. Yeah, it was uh, impressive. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. As we approach the end of the year, it's a time filled with mixed emotions for many of us. Personally, I look forward to the holidays, the lights, the celebrations, the vlogmas, the time with family, but let's be real, it's not always jolly and bright. The end of the year can bring its own set of challenges and stress. From planning events to meeting end of year deadlines, it's a whirlwind of activity that can sometimes feel overwhelming. And if you're like me, you might also experience those seasonal blues. The shorter days and colder weather can really impact our mood. It's natural to feel a bit of sadness or anxiety as the year winds down or as, or as you're having your annual vlogmas spiral. Here's something to consider. Adding something new and positive to your routine can make a big difference. That's where BetterHelp comes in. Imagine having a dedicated therapist to talk to, someone to help you navigate these complex feelings and stressors. Therapy with BetterHelp can be that bright spot amid all the hustle and bustle. It's a chance to feel grounded, to gain tools to manage everything that's going on. Whether it's stress about the holidays, anxiety about the new year, or just needing someone to talk to, BetterHelp is there. It's convenient, flexible, and personalized just for you. The end of the year and all of December means one thing. As I mentioned, it's Vlogmas. It is the season of the vlog. And let me tell you, by week two, I can feel extremely overwhelmed. There's usually at least one day of burnout that's already happened. I really lean to therapy this time of the year to help give me the tools to manage that stress and prioritize what's important. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited for your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists at any time for no additional cost. Find your bright spot this season with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com WT9 to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P, dot com slash WT9. Wow. So, I, but like, again, it was just, I, if that hadn't have happened mm -hmm. and I was fucked up for like a, a week and a half where I was not okay. Mm -hmm. Like I had to call my mom to come out. I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't shower. I couldn't mm -hmm. open my computer, nothing. And I was like, this is very wrong. Something is very wrong with me. And I kept going, it's me, it's me. What does this breakup say about me? Yeah. And the, the foresight though, to, to be able, even yes. in that state to like be oh, able yeah. to understand that and recognize that is huge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't think I recognized anything in that state, except for, I was like, somebody help me. Yeah. Like, yeah. I know that's fucked up. And I think you're right. Like a lot of people in those scenarios want to blame someone else. We yeah, want to say it's sure. them. We don't take accountability. Mm -hmm. And I mean, there's a balance, right? And another thing I learned is about like rewriting the story of a breakup. Mm -hmm. So we, when people ask like, hey, what happened between you two? We tend to go into the details. We want to vilify or we want to pedestal our ex. Either like he was the best thing I ever had. I'm never going to have anything like that. Or it's, he was always a piece of shit. I fucking hated him. He was an <laughs> asshole, which I tend to lean towards. I was say, I've never, I've never put, actually that's not true. I feel like that I dated one guy who was like, I was like, he was so great. He was so nice. So the kind. The one so that got away. Yeah. I don't think and I've ever like, painted one, someone like yeah, that. No, ever. no. I also have never had one that got <laughs> yeah, away. But, but like, usually I right. definitely lean towards the like, fuck that piece of shit. Truly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> the thing is, is what we don't realize is like, every time we tell the story with those details, we're re-traumatizing ourselves. Mm. And in a way, still connecting ourselves to them right. in a victimhood mentality. Yeah. Mm. We're going like, I'm so fucked up because of them. Even though it's, we're, we no longer talk, I'm still connecting myself to him. I in think a when there's like level. lasting anger, even I think you're yes. still a little connected and until you can like look at someone and be like, I'm neutral about you. Exactly. It's like, I feel like that's when you've like fully let go. And me and Jared mm -hmm. completely neutral with each right. other. Like could not be more neutral. And I was like, Oh, that if that's capable of existing between mm -hmm. exes, like if both people have the capacity to show up in a way that is making a breakup kind 
Mm -hmm. and taking accountability and really meeting in the middle and not saying, hey, like there was never love here. There was never growth. There was never like good things that happened. If we can acknowledge that there were and there was love yeah. and sometimes a, a, a relationship just expires, right. it doesn't yeah. fail. Dude, we would all walk away from relationships so less completely fucked in the head. Right, 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 right. You should keep writing that break. I book. did, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm even just like you bringing up how, I don't, I don't even have the words, Never mind. <laughs> This is like 90% of me and Maggie's conversation about me being like, no, what did you say? What did you do? Tell me. Maggie, your last breakup, what was like kind of the, in, in the most neutral, non-vilifying and non-pedestal approach? I know, that's why. I was going to say, I've how never did it, talked did it about end? it in a non-vilifying <gasps> way because. But also, if he was a villain, we can just say so. I he mean, was. Also, I also support that. No, but here's the thing. Okay. But now I have a fix for this, right? Okay. Because some women were there who were in domestic violence situations. Right. So mm. how do you not vilify that exactly. person? Yeah. And here's the thing. You have to recognize in telling people about your breakup, mm -hmm. a lot of the times what we want is for someone else to just understand how fucking bad it was. Right. Like, I just want someone to empathize with me. Mm -hmm. But what the purpose of retelling your story and reorganizing your story is actually to give you the power back. Mm. So in taking out the details of attaching yourself to him, you're actually doing yourself a favor mm. by saying, and dude, I had to, I went from writing the story of his and I's breakup from two pages to four bullet points. Oh, it was wow. like, we jumped into a relationship right after I got out of a long one. Mm -hmm. I saw red flags, but I ignored them as a sense of keeping some control. We ended because we didn't have the same conflict resolution style. I am still forgiving myself for the way I felt in the relationship. Right, so it's about you. Mm -hmm. It's about you. It's about you. And so for like, if he was a villain, how can you make it empowering to you to still disconnect your brain from it in a way that still hurts you? Mm. But that's okay if you still want to be hurt by it. Like I was going to say, there's a, there's a, there's a large some piece of me that's still like, fuck that yeah. villain, I fuck know. the villain. I know, <laughs> I know. And trust me, some women there were like not ready to do that yeah. yet and like more power to them. But the sooner you can recognize that there are simply ways to make this process easier on you, mm -hmm. like you can make that choice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have you, to. You have the power to make that yeah. decision for yourself when you retell the yeah, story. Yeah, by all means, if you can handle it, fucking go for it, yeah. sister. I yeah, can't. Yeah, yeah. I can, yeah. I'm stressed. I'm highly sensitive. Yeah. So if you got a hack for me, a biohack, if you will, I'll take it. Mm. 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 Um, We touched on this a little bit right before we started recording, but- Kelsey, you are, okay, so I was like, Kelsey, are you Polly? What are you? <laughs> and I was like, like, and I know that like, you know, labels are a lot sometimes. And so if you don't even want to add a label, but like explain to me what you started saying about okay. like Gen Z. So <laughs> I used to always identify as ethically non-monogamous. So e &M, or okay. open. Ethically non-monogamous. Non okay. Yes. And then I started saying polyamorous because yeah. to me, that just means you're capable of dating and existing in multiple relationships. Right. Gen Z has decided that Polly is more like you can be in love, like deep love with more than one person at once. Okay. okay. So. But I feel like that's not how you operate. Not yet. But then when I think about it, I'm like, I love both of you at the same time. And I have friends. But that, not romantically. Right. Yeah. So the difference is in ENM relationships, there's typically a primary partner. Right. And um, there is a hierarchy to the relationship. Okay. So if like you were my partner, Mags, and you were like, and I was like, oh, I'm going to go date Laura. And you were like, my, um, my mom is sick. Me and you have been fighting. And I... Lauren fuck stole ten dollars from me once. I don't want you to date her. I had I'm the so choice. Sorry, I'll ten dollars. <laughs> I would have the choice to be like, okay, this is my primary partnership. I need this to be stable before I can go make this right. work. And so then you would cut me off. And well, and maybe, maybe not. I would just maybe be like, I'm gonna work on things with you before I right. And like, I hope you understand that. Or like maybe I'd go lower on the, the yeah. or I'd just be like, we're just gonna fuck. We're not gonna develop an yeah. emotional okay. connection. And Maggie's like, all right, I can do that. Mm. But Gen Zers are like, if there's hierarchy in the relationship styles, that's not true poly. True poly leans more towards relationship anarchist, which is the farthest left you can go. I know your brain Whoa, just short just like, I just glitched, okay. <laughs> relationship anarchists basically don't believe in relationships. It's like you are 
the only power and like where else you find power is your fucking choice. You don't have to answer to anyone. There's no hierarchy. There's no promises. There's no, sometimes people believe um, ethics in it. Mm. Um, so So then what does a true poly relationship look like? People believe the non-hierarchical approach. So you can be, there's no one primary partnership. I see. So we would all love, if we were if we were in a poly relationship, we mm-hmm. would all love each other equally. It wouldn't be like yes. a, you and Maggie and then me. Even if yeah. we were 10 years together mm-hmm. and like you and I just started. I see. So when someone matter. joins, everyone's an equal. Everyone is an equal. Okay. And this would be called a polycule. Cool. A polycule. A polycule triad. And then there's kitchen table polyamory which is my, is more what I'm leaning to. Okay. Kitchen table. I'm learning so much. Just this is an educational Warren podcast. With right like the, the numbers. The equations flying over my head right now. I'm like one penis. <laughs> <laughs> Forever. Um, kitchen table poly is basically you can date multiple people at once, but everyone needs to be able to sit at a kitchen table together and get along. Okay. So okay. in some poly relationships, it's like my partner might not like you. And I have to be like, well, that seems like you're a problem to solve. It mm-hmm. seems like something within your own heart. Mm-hmm. Whereas like a kitchen table poly, which is what I'm for, is like you can be on whatever hierarchical with whomever you want, but we all need to be able to sit at a fucking dinner table yeah. and be able to chill. Yep. We don't all have to fuck, but we got to be cool. Yep. Okay. And that's what I think I am more like. Okay. Mm. So you're going to put that in Instagram bio, kitchen table. <laughs> <laughs> Just a spatula and like six people emojis with the eggplant and the squirt. <laughs> Yes. No, you should put that on the back of your car. Yeah, you that's my sticker. God. Yeah. Sequence. Remember when everyone had their family? Like, mom. Yeah, they thing. still do I that. People still they do that. S- people still do that all no, the time. No, they don't. Yeah, the stick figure. Really? Um, bumper stickers? I don't think I've seen that in a while. I could see you putting like a Bowie on the back of your car. Okay, Absolutely. well, did you know <laughs> that's my that son. when yeah. Zach and Maggie were about to start dating, what did you want to put on your car that Zach was like, I will not continue this relationship if you go forward with this? Oh, I wanted to put reindeer ears on. Right? Was it reindeer ears? I thought oh, you wanted a like nose. a full like punch buggy with like eyelash. Eyelashes! You wanted eyelash, wasn't it eyelashes? Oh, that's a hard one. I don't line. think it was eyelashes. That's I a think non-negotiable. Be, yeah. Yeah, I think it was eyelashes because reindeer antlers I'm I'm in on. Yeah. yeah, and like a nose. I'm pretty sure Zach was anti-reindeer. He's like, really? that is well, so Maybe it was also the nose. It was the nose. I, I love the, the nose. nose. That's so fun. Beep, beep. Yeah. yeah no, I'm, I'm in on that as well. Fuck yeah. Zach. Fuck Zach. He's yeah. out. We are at a kitchen table here. We're at a kitchen <laughs> table. It's girls exactly. night. Jeremy's out of town. What else? <laughs> Zach is fixing the car. We have a Christmas tree. He loves it. You know. I love that the other night. He felt the need to tell us in the group chat. We what? four have a group chat called Cutie Coochies. And <laughs> Zach's sister was saying that Zach doesn't belong in Cootie Coochies because it's just cootie. He's like, what are you doing in there? That, that's clearly not for you. <laughs> <laughs> just one of the Little girls. does he, she know. One, one, of one of the girls. girls. Zach is so one of the fucking he, girls. Also, Zach is included. quite active in Cutie Coochies, oh, yeah. I'd say. And he's a yeah. little yeah. gossip hoe. He Zach loves the tea. Gossip yeah, he he'll go to, he'll he go to the craft tea. fairs with us. He loves it. Yeah, he really? also loves a craft Yeah, I've yeah. been to multiple craft fairs with Zach. Yeah. No, I went I to a craft fair this weekend. Yeah. He came. He oh wasn't invited, but he's like, I'm coming. Oh, I just love when he does stuff that's not work related. Like yeah. when I hear him doing anything recreationally, <laughs> like, I'm like, good for you. Yeah, good good boy for works so you. hard. I'm just glad he sees the sunlight in a way that isn't work yeah. related. <laughs> his little, his so little if I him, I'd be in bed. Yeah. Oh, All well, his time. body's also broken. That's too. what I'm saying. So I'm like, like, please, sir. Yeah. But not, not, he's... not your sir. Not my sir. sir. Yeah, I know. I need sir. to take back the word, sir. I think I'm going to hire a dominatrix to okay. like work with. Cause when I when I did the boot camp yeah. and the dominatrix was there, uh-huh. she picked me as the volunteer, of course. And <laughs> I mean, yeah. She I like told her my problems with sex and dominating being dominated. In front and, of everyone? <laughs> yeah. Oh, we were fucking close knit family by this time. Okay. I knew everyone's secrets. And uh anytime I played like sub or dom roles in bed, right? Anytime someone's dominated me, it's been very like, you slut, like get on your fucking knee. Like very <laughs> I would Classic. literally cry if someone said that I to know. me. Really? And Maggie, I feel like Maggie and I feel like you're on the same with this. Yeah. I'd be like, what? Wait, what? <laughs> what? How, do what? You, how do your lovers talk to you during sex? Not like that. What do they say? I'm, I would say like, that is not sexy to me yeah. whatsoever. Like being degraded in any way is not cute to me. What? Yeah. So, so he never like whispers like good girl in your ear or anything? I don't know. I feel I like that's have, even worse. Yeah, I don't have a praise good kink girl. or a degra- de- what? degradation Give kink. Give me, can you tell me anything they say? Like, um, uh, 
<laughs> I don't know. I don't like. I would just say it's nothing too extreme on either side. Is I guess how the best way to explain it. I need. I need. So, give me something to work with. Um. I'm, I don't. I. I. I'm, Maggie's just disassociating. <laughs> we, we've still got Zach in a robe oscillating over here. <laughs> I gave you. I gave you two sound clips. <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> I'm yeah, done over did. here. <laughs> like, um, like you're so hot. Yeah, like, like I would say just stuff like, like that. Like you're so hot. Yeah, I like, like it when you do that. <laughs> that sounded like a bad rap, like reading, like a bad rap lyric reading. Like I drop it low when you hit the ground. <laughs> it's like that ass on the my floor, dick, baby. <laughs> yeah. Make it roll. My lip gloss be popping. <laughs> <laughs> You're like Jeremy, why are you wearing lip gloss? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would say like that's the best way to describe it. Is that like nothing too intense on either side. You know what it is too, is that because so much, so many like smutty books have like hardcore praise kink, I feel like involved and written into them. If Jeremy were to ever say something that I've read in a book, I would fucking die. Like I would be just really? mortified. Yeah. If he just like took out your smut book and started reading it, like- I would <laughs> rather die. Cause sometimes, I don't know, like I think the, the the praise thing for me personally, just like doesn't, doesn't strike a chord for me. Do you know why? Why? Cause you're a fucking performing successful Leo in your real life that you don't want Maybe. that in your sex life. Maybe. It took me a long time to enjoy Praise Kink. Cause mm. I was not, I was like, I fucking know. I know. <laughs> You're You're so right. Shut up. Thank you. I, I know. know. Or like, good girl. I'd be like, Shut the, who the fuck are you talking to? Like, I'd be like, fight back with them. But now I'm like, I, I, I can put myself in the role play. Anything like good girl to me too sounds like um like age age play a little bit and like yeah, that makes me that. like a little bit weird. And again, all personal it's preference. Power. It's power. Yeah. To me, it's more power dynamics rather than age play. So like with domination, mm -hmm. right? Like I said, like I'd only ever been with people that when they're when I'm in a more submissive role, let's say, yeah, I'm only used to them talking to me like bossing Shut me up around. Slut. Shut mm. up, slut. <laughs> You come go, okay, sorry. Um, but <laughs> Maggie and I literally <laughs> starting to tear up. We're like, oh, stop it. <laughs> but this dominatrix, we like kind of had an interview before and like negotiations and what's our safe words and stuff. And she was like, um, what are you struggling with? And I was basically like sharing my deepest like desires and mm. kinks. Like I'm always worried that someone's gonna shame me or think I'm fucking weird. Yeah. And so she was like, okay, I'm taking in all this information. Great. Like, you know, your safe word, da, 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 da. And she never raised her voice above this. Wow. And she was like, get on your knees. And I was like, oh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I like get on my hands and knees. And she like grabbed my chin and was like this far away from my face. And she was like, if you deny yourself any pleasure, I'm going to spank you. And I was like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, do you want pleasure? And I was like, mm. and she was like, boom, you hesitated. And she was like, I want you to step into your full embodied powerful. <laughs> and I was just like, I'm having a hard time with this, but I'm also very wet. What the fuck? And so by the time she was done, which was like 20 <laughs> minutes later, it was basically like I had been confidently, like upliftedly dominated. Right, that makes sense. That makes sense So If there's like a sense of safety and respect yes. still within that role, I yes. could see how that could be like how that could work. Oh my God. And all I could think about was like, I think I want to hire a dom to like gas me up to like learn how to be more right. embodied and mm -hmm. like powerful because I had never had that before. Right. And then she just like snapped back into her regular personality. And I was like, what the <laughs> fuck was that? Like, how do you just put that hat on? And it felt really safe. You're yeah. right. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. I think that was also her being a woman, me being mm -hmm. a woman. Like I just felt very trusting to give away my power. And by giving it away, I felt powerful. Right. If that makes right. sense. Yeah, that makes, that makes total sense. Yeah. Why Maggie, did I Maggie and I, I live so her. vicariously through you. <laughs> yeah. That makes me so happy. I wish you were just a little nasty, nasty cum slut like me. We always joke You're about how nasty, nasty. Um, Just Zach, Maggie, and I would <laughs> go to a sex party with you yes, and- My dream. Sit, hold hands. Hold hands on the couch. Yep. Zach, Maggie, and I on We'd the couch together. Squishmallows. Screaming. And <laughs> screaming. Because we were so curious in terms of like, just like the actual atmosphere and like what goes down if like, if they're handing out snacks. Like, yes, they are. Like, yeah. They are. Yeah. They are. Yeah. Good snacks too. Wow. Yeah. I have good news for you guys. My next development project is about LA sex parties. <gasps> That's Whoa. an incredible documentary yeah. that will crush. That I, will absolutely crush. Yeah. So uh, you'll get an inside look. Yeah. And actually we need people to go for the first time for one of our scenes. 
No, thank you. But I'm so excited <laughs> what to support your documentary. You know? I'm so excited. <laughs> Again, one penis for life. <laughs> one penis for life. I'm going to make you something with that. That's There's like a camera more. following Lauren. I just know. Like, and it's just, they're like, we can't use like, any of this audio. It's just her screaming. One penis for life. <laughs> one penis for life. <laughs> just on the couch. That, that's literally that guy getting looking at me. <laughs> Oh um, anyway, shall we pivot over to, I was thinking about um, couples therapy and I was like, mm. all three of us have done couples therapy with oh, yeah. partners at some yeah. point. Um, Maggie, I'd love to hear your perspective of couples therapy and like oh, how yeah. it's gone for you. Of course. I actually Go got on. my uh, couples <laughs> therapy reference from Miss Kelsey Dar. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's right. <laughs> my favorite. I remember, Therapist okay, ever. so we did it a couple months before we got married, mm-hmm. just kind of to like talk things through because we hadn't really Tighten done it before Pre, premarital yeah. we had yeah. done like separate therapy in the past and we were just like why don't we work on this and i remember telling people that we were in couples therapy like during the engagement period and people a lot of like older mostly mm. like aunts uncles yeah and people like around that age were always so confused they were like those are the people that need therapy the most they're, they're like, the ones who think you don't go to therapy unless you're like something seriously on the wrong. Edge of divorce. Yeah. yeah and like a couple of our friends too they were like you just like mentioned that you 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 have therapy with Zach in, a, in like an hour. Is everything okay? And you're like, yeah, yeah, that's why it's okay. Yeah, yeah. that's why exactly. going to therapy. Yeah, so we just kind of talked about like arguments that we had had in the past and that we work through, and there's we kind of dissected all of those, yeah. and it was fascinating. And she kind of taught us how to fight fair. Mm-hmm. I thought it was really beneficial to do, especially before the wedding, because she it brought up like conversations we had never thought to kind of talk mm-hmm. about, mm-hmm. even like normal things that you would normal even things that you would think about like premaritally like are we gonna have kids are we like what are our I don't, just household like, rules yeah just like yeah. straightforward stuff mm-hmm. there was other things that she was like you guys should think about this and it was I I thought it was a great experience and I'm so glad that we did it it yeah. got to a point too where she was like I don't think you guys need this anymore we did it for like a couple months that's mm-hmm. great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jeremy and I have also, so we're doing this premarital course that um, Michelle Carre and her husband, Garrett. Wait, you guys are in couples therapy? I was so excited to tell you this Ooh, live what? on the podcast. Oh. I know. We're almost Wait, done. when you said it, when you were like, all three of us have been, I was like, no, no. she's a fucking liar. She's lying straight to her audience. <laughs> Fake influencer. <laughs> You're doing it? We were almost done our premarital course. What? Yeah, we've probably done 15 hours of therapy. And this is me talking directly to Jeremy. I am so proud of you. Yeah. I cannot believe the growth. Whatever it took to get there, I'm so happy you did it because I know it makes Lauren very happy and it makes me very happy. I want to tell you that Jeremy has never watched an episode of my podcast after cool. I've hit public. <laughs> <laughs> well, someone clip out just that we'll, part we'll and send that. it to we'll him. We'll clip that and, and tag him in it. Wait, tell me about that. First of all, how the fuck did you get him to go? No, it is, uh, I would literally, the personal growth that Jeremy has had as an individual over the last year has been monumental it is insane like i'm not even with the same person that what? i was it is insane like, we'll, we'll talk about this more after the podcast yeah. as well too but like like this so this course that michelle and garrett recommended to us um has been absolutely incredible it, it's specifically built for like couples who are engaged it's a premarital chorus and like you basically summarizing exactly what you said maggie is that like we really dissected our most like common um, conflicts mm-hmm. or like the triggers that both of us have that we've identified. Cause I feel like him and I have pretty solid communication to begin mm-hmm. with. So like we're able to very quickly list off what our triggers are and like our most <laughs> like reoccurring conflicts. I feel like most couples can. Yeah, of course. Mm-hmm. Um, but then like we also tackled like sex and like how happy you are and like if your needs are being met and like how you communicate, how like to um, make time for it and keep it a priority or, you know, how it falls just like into your routine of life. And also the more like household items. So there there was a whole session just like on talking about things that you may not have um, broached the topic of. So like kids, wow. like who's going to take care of the kids? Like, what are you going to do? Like, are you guys doing a prenup? Like where does like money come from and stuff like that to like broach the subject. And I think because we've shared a business for so long, yeah. we've had a lot of those conversations mm-hmm. that might be awkward for couples later on down mm-hmm. the road in terms of like finances. But oh, since yeah. we've been so transparent along stuff the way. Stuff that pops up you don't think about. Yeah, you yeah. don't think about that kind of stuff. Um, but how long is it? It's eight sessions. Uh, And is it with a person or it's it's like a a couple, a married couple, which is amazing. 
so they're married they're australian uh-huh. and um yeah it's it's just great to have both you know perspectives yeah how, wh- wh- is I'm this over zoom shocked. it's over zoom yeah, okay. yeah wait like how did you introduce the idea of it well so we had michelle on the podcast uh-huh. she brought it up and then after so i was like jeremy i would love to do this and he was like so receptive to it and he i think because i think i'm sure this happens often is that like one of the partners doesn't put as much into the couple's sure. therapy and with therapy you only get out of it what you can put into Amen. it and um he has been giving 110 percent his of whole I. bussy into it his <gasps> whole fucking bussy Jeremy. is into his Jeremy. Jeremy. <laughs> That's He's been so putting his good. whole Jeremosi into therapy and I'm so proud of him. And we have, I feel like made just like as a couple, like I feel so much more equipped mm. in terms of also to like being held accountable by the therapist when either of us in the recurring conflicts, like they'll call you on your shit mm-hmm. and they make you take time to address like what you might not be doing right. And Mm. because you've got that like middle ground that is the neutral ground and it's also a man and a woman because I think even when something is delivered, Mm -hmm. like if we only had a male therapist, I think that there's probably something subconscious. Mm -hmm. If a man was telling me that I was wrong, I'd be like, go fuck Fuck yourself, you're on his side. (laughs) Yeah, Mm. But because we have both of them, that's um, a huge, and it probably helped like hearing it from such a personal experience from someone. Like I feel like having that kind of, recommendation probably mm-hmm. helped as opposed to just if you're like go to couples therapy it's yeah. like, like what do you Yelp, imagine couples yeah. therapy yeah. Yeah. who or do i go to yeah. call him yeah. at least it's yeah. someone who's like in a similar life stage of, yeah about yeah to get yeah they're like also a couple years older than us they've been married for i can't remember how many years not that long but they've been oh together for like 10 years you don't have to answer this how much is it um i yeah. Is it like regular thing or is it like a program that's got it's, it's these a, more it's intensive a, like Yeah, yeah, like there's like modules to it got kind it. of like okay. and and like because every relationship is different, it's not necessarily like we have to do each module. Yeah. It's more like we have a set amount of of um sessions uh-huh. and we have a general like starting point. Uh-huh. But if we veer off, like it doesn't we don't yeah. have to like complete and like check mark everything off the list, which What's is nice. The, mm. What would you say like is something you learned and something Jeremy learned? Um, I think one of the, and I mean, honestly, I think that we would both speak to the same thing is that in our conflict, I think that we receive and give apologies differently. Mm. Like what we're looking for, like we literally just had this conversation the other day is that like, I really value the quality of an apology, but for him, the timing of the apology also mm. really, really matters. Mm. And so it would it would upset me when, or, or he, if he felt like I needed to apologize for something and he would have to feel like he was asking for it. Then it doesn't matter to it him. It doesn't matter yeah. to him. And oh. I was like, but I apologize with my whole heart. It was so genuine, it was so heartfelt, but yeah. because of the timing. And so like, I really had to, I think, relearn that in terms of how it pertains to our relationship. And then also, I think one of the other things is that we commonly, and this I think also has to do with, like is connected to his ADHD, is that when we're having conflict, he sees the end goal, but can sometimes um, kind of like push through all of the middle stuff. Mm. And if something small and hurtful happens in the middle ground, like I need to, I need to feel that and I need to unpack that and I need him to, we need to resolve that before we can get to the end. But I think because he can see through all the way, we have to slow down. I'm literally mm. gonna cry. I'm like so proud of you both. Oh my God, it has been so good. And like, we, it's also great because like, they're not the type of therapists they are like, hey, and that's our 15 minutes and yeah. I will see you next week. Like we've had sessions that were like two and a half hours long. Wow. And like, it doesn't end until we finish. Wow. Mm. Oh That's my amazing. God. That is very big. I truly recommend it for every couple. That is so impressive. And yeah. like very big of a choice to do before marriage. Cause it's like, you could enter that shit and be like, oh, we are not ready or yeah. like we are yeah, too yeah, incompatible yeah, yeah. like yes. that's an incredible thing yeah and especially like f- just all the m- stuff you've done in mental health like you know but mm-hmm. then to still feel like yeah no I always have room to grow like to feel oh like God, you don't always. know everything like yeah that's the mm-hmm. hard thing like e- both of y'all got egos and it's a good thing because mm-hmm. we love that about both of you guys it makes you special <laughs> sparkly people but like it's a big deal you should be really proud of yourselves that's cool no we really are I'm, I'm just like I'm just so grateful that Jeremy's like really put his and whole Jeremy into it Jeremy Jeremy <laughs> He's I've gonna got, fucking hate that. <laughs> I've got so many ideas of things to make with that now. Oh my god! Um, I also want to talk about your IVF. <gasps> oh yeah, you, and I feel earlier like, this yeah. year. And I feel like in connection to this, I feel like Maggie and I are both going through the like 
all, like Clock the forever on bombarding of yeah. when are you having kids, when are you having kids, when are you having kids, especially now that you're married. Cause everyone's oh, like, yeah. oh, that's the next step. I'm yeah. sure you're here. Like you don't even get to do it. You don't even get to be married. And they're like, okay, when are you having kids? You're like, bitch, we just got married. Yeah, what do you mean? Exactly. Damn. Yeah. It was intense. It was actually uh, the week after I did it was when Sir and I broke up. So I had like all the chemical reactions like coming out of me. It was a clusterfuck. I actually didn't have a bad time at all. Um, when it, people say it's usually really intense, like doing the shots is when mm-hmm. they feel really hormonal. I felt and like the, bloated. Yeah. The dip afterwards, like all the chemicals leaving. Yeah. Oh. But then you compound it with the stress of like putting on the retreat and there was stress of the breakup. So it was like, I could see where there were outside factors. The projectile vomit now makes more sense. Yeah. It was, <laughs> I'll never forget that. Like that's just <laughs> burned into my mind as I can't believe that I put that in the chapter of my life. Um, <laughs> I, gravity. It was gravity. I had no, I had no say in that situation. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, yeah, coming yeah. out. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm 33. Mm-hmm. I gave, you know, Jared the best eggs of my life and didn't want children pretty much that entire relationship. But he was the first person that I was like, oh, I could see myself doing this, but I mm-hmm. still wasn't ready. When we broke up, I was like, oh, fuck. I don't know anything about eggs and like, I just know I'm getting older and my mom had a really hard time getting pregnant. And oh, so I knew I right. should go get checked. Yeah. And obviously we all know your girl's got pussy problems. Oh. Um, so basically like there's a couple steps to it, right? If you're just doing egg freezing, that's just pulling eggs out, freezing them. Eventually you have to mesh them with spermy sperm and make an embryo mm. and either implant that make a baby before or, the that part though even if you're just freezing eggs yeah. you still do the shots leading up to yes, it right? yes yes yeah, so yeah, there's okay. that version and then there's the embryo making process where you would go in with a sperm yes. person so a sperm, a sperm person, person? <laughs> if you're lucky you know them and they like you uh, and that's where you actually mix the egg with the sperm there like the day you do the retrieval I and see. you put that on ice because then you can see the type the gender of your baby you can see if they have any yep. chromosomal misnomers blah 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 yeah um, so I decided I wanted to do egg freezing, just the basic, basic tier one. Right. And, um, basically what you do is if you're on birth control, you have to get off. You have to allow. Oh, fuck. Oh yeah. You have for to how just. how long? Yeah. For how long? Until it's out of your system, which I was not on birth control. So I don't know how long it is oh, okay. for oh, people. Shit. Are you on birth control, Maggie? No, you're not. I'm not. You're not. And That's you right. do have to get off some medications too. Ew. Yeah. Not anything. Not anything we're on. Okay. Not Go. any brain pills. Oh, yeah. the fun ones. Yeah. The fun ones. I see. Yeah. No, oh my I, God. Can you imagine? I, I was like, my life, I was like oh fuck. no. <laughs> no, it really wasn't that bad. But uh, you basically have a series of appointments and you want to have like a good month of time where you're in your location. You're not traveling a lot. You're not too stressed. Nothing's too turbulent. You're not going to have sex Mm -hmm. for a month. No sex for a month. No sex during the week before shots, two weeks of doing the shots and for 10 days after. Wow. Yeah. I feel like no one's told me that before. Did you diddle yourself? No. So they were like, you can she was like, he was, he was like, you can have I orgasms. Love, he's like, did you diddle yourself? I, I was like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> you just, just nothing, nothing penet- pop in the eggs. Okay, gotcha. Or the, um, okay. Uh, Does follicles. an orgasm pop the egg? No, but rough stuff. Like if you go in anal, you can fuck them around, mush them around. They're pretty, pretty sturdy, but they don't so want- So you just can't get them like a nine inch dildo, basically you, is what you're no saying. no sex. Like they don't want it penetrating, No, but in Maggie's words, you could dildo on the outside. You could dildo. Yeah. You could diddle on the outside. You can diddle on the outside. You can diddle on the outside. <laughs> yeah. Okay, got so it. So you need to I'm have- So glad we're clear on this. Yeah, <laughs> but you need to have all of this prepped in advance, yeah, yeah, which yeah. I did not. And I was traveling a lot during this time. Oh. Uh, and I was also not ready to stop having sex. I didn't know about the before, the week before and the 10 days after. I thought maybe just 12 days or 10 days, mm. it was a lot more. That, that is long. That's way longer than a, I would have anticipated. Yeah. 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 But also, you know what I'm kind of thinking now? I'm like, am I ovaries getting stabbed by dick every time I have <laughs> sex now? No, 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 because here, I'm going to explain why. <laughs> the meds pump up your follicles. So you have so, so many. Every month, your, your ovaries drop follicles. Only one survives and that's with yes, her drops yes, the egg. Yes. But when you're doing IVF, you're basically taking medicine that plumps up all of them. So in our age group, you typically want to have around 10 to 20. Okay. And so that's why you get really bloated is because your eggs are getting fucking huge. You're all getting roided out eggs so that yes. they all become the one that I see, drops. I see, I see. And then they go and <laughs> they boba them out. They yep. boba that, suck them out with like a straw <laughs> mm-hmm. and they um, put them on ice. And 
only about 70% of those will survive the thawing Did process. Did you get to see them? Yeah. How big are they? The tip of a pen. Wow. Well, tip like of a, a like pin. A, like, a, uh, like a fish egg? It's way fucking smaller. Smaller. Tip of a pin. Wow. Like a needle point. <gasps> so, like a, like yeah. A- but basically the hard part, the part that everyone talks about is you have to self-administer shots. Yeah. And during- no, Nurse Maggie over here. I'm yeah. gonna, I'm just come to your house, It was Maggie. not bad is at it? all. Yeah. I've okay. like given myself allergy shots before and stuff like it was not I've never that given big of a deal. Shot. Really? The Ever. first one is the hardest. Cause you're like, yeah. The anticipation. And then once you do it, you're like, oh, okay. I wish it was like the EpiPen where- You just, it just like, does it by himself. Or like you you press it up and then you push the button and it just shoots it into you like, or it counts down. This one, do you have, you do have you get to go a really slow. So there's a couple, you're taking like three ah! to four different kinds depending on your protocol. So you go in, after you've been off birth control, you go and you get what your body is naturally producing. I had seven on my left, six on my right. Okay. That was me just ovulating regularly as a human. Then those disappear and only one drops. Then I got on the medication Mm -hmm. and for some reason, my, you go in, when you start the shots, you have to go in every two to three days to see how your follicles are developing. Damn. And every time I went in, they would be like, okay, yep. Your one's on your right. They're getting nice and juicy. We can't see anything on your left. I'm going, what? I was like, I had seven when I came in and they were like, yeah, we might not be able to see it. Sometimes you can't see into the area, blah, blah, blah. They're like, don't worry. Don't worry. We're also up your meds. Da, 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 da doing the shots, come back three days later. We still can't see, but don't worry. Last appointment, still can't see. You're going for surgery. We'll see if we can see anything in there. It's a very quick procedure, 15 minutes. I know. So Kelsey also has a whole TikTok series oh, yeah. on this. I watched it. <laughs> you literally went under it. It seemed like for like six seconds. Yeah. Wow. I was literally like, and then I was like, oh, I'm out. And they only do that because they are like puncturing the Oh, knock me the fuck out. Yeah, yeah there's out. no world where you're anyone out. should be like la, 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 yeah. conscious for that. Yeah, no, no, no. You know how much our pups mean to Jeremy and I, and we would do absolutely anything to make sure that they are always feeling their best. And that is why we love Medterra CBD pet products. Medterra is the leading CBD company in the US using premium ingredients to drive various wellness solutions. They recently did a study with researchers at the Baylor College of Medicine to produce peer review findings that nine out of 10 dogs showed benefits, including reduced pain and increased mobility with the use of CBD. Our 14 year old black lab neighbor dog, Jack, his life changed when he got on CBD. It, it really did. Absolutely changed. It really did. Medterra takes quality seriously. Every product is third party lab tested. We're talking top notch verification to ensure your pet gets only the best. And for those who care about the environment and health, listen to this. Medterra's hemp is GMO and pesticide free. That's right. Pure goodness from nature, just as it should be. And for all of our vegan listeners, Medterra has got you covered. Their products are 100% vegan, free from any animal byproducts. It's compassion and care in every package. Should we get our producer Shoshana some some, uh, some pet CBD? Yeah, some pet CBD, perfect. Yeah, some vegan Merry pet CBD. Merry Christmas. Yeah. They have their CBD drops that come in beef, chicken, and unflavored and are made with high quality human grade CBD isolate combined with organic MCT oil. These drops give your pets a precise way to find balance and calmness. Or you can try out these CBD joint support shoes that are designed to bring physical and mental support to your pet's daily health. And those come in bacon flavor, which if you have a pup in your life, you know that they will be incredibly excited about that. Pup arthritis. We've got something for you. Bacon. Now, all you have to do is go to the link in our bio and Medterra is letting you try it free. Yes, you heard that right. Get a free $40 product to try and just pay for shipping. Give your pet the gift of health and happiness this holiday season. And they literally like suck it out with a straw and they like push it back out into a little Petri dish. They pass it through the window and that's where they like ice it. Yeah. And uh, so when I woke up, They were like, we only had six Mm -hmm. and I, you want to have 20 ideally. And it just so happened that like, for some reason, my left side wasn't responding to that medication Mm. protocol. It could have been stress. It could have been the relationship. It could have been so many different factors, factors. but it's not that my, my, left side wasn't producing any, it just wasn't responding to medication. Right, because you, mm. it showed that you had, yes. that's, that's a level of reassurance I feel like that is exactly. feels nice. And so I'm gonna do it again. Mm-hmm. And the next time I do it, because I did free six, 
Um, and he wants, he wants more obviously, cause then you have to remember only 70% solve right. the thawing process. And yeah. then maybe even some of those don't survive the embryo mm-hmm. process. Mm-hmm. Um, so I might be lucky to get like two right. embryos out of that. I'm going to do another egg freezing process where I mesh with my best friend's sperm. I was gonna say, I feel like we need to oh, okay. share yeah, uh, yeah. exactly who you chose for my your baby your, daddy. Your, your, what, what I thought you had guy? already done embryos. No, no. Okay. No, we, we literally are, we, my psych, I, after the breakup, I stopped getting my period. Oh. So I couldn't do my cycle. Mm. So right. thanks, fucker, for thanks, that. sir. Fucker, so sir. So yes, my best friend, he's a gay man. He has never wanted kids, but mm-hmm. he might change his mind. And I told him, hey, if you give this to me, if you want to ever use one of the embryos and I'm not using them, you guys could have one too. Right. So he basically gets something out of it. But he had zero hesitations without question. He's like, I've been trying to donate my sperm for years. <laughs> They won't take it because I got this or that or my family's got this, but I know I'm, my genetics are gorgeous. He is tall. He is tan. He is so handsome. Native American, yes. baby yeah. blue eyes, fucking incredible family, incredible mm-hmm. personalities. Like I knew without a doubt, like he was the one for sure. And he didn't even, he showed up with bells and whistles on. Also, this is such a better choice than like any one of the, like, you know what I mean? The you know what I mean? <laughs> Y'all know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And like, look, you can easily get a sperm donor because there is no shortage of sperm. Men donate. Oh, they're so they're so picky on who's. So when Jeremy was super broke and he first moved to LA, he like looked into it just for like literally another source of income. Mm-hmm. And because he hadn't finished college, mm-hmm. that even though he's six foot four, mm-hmm. like has a great head of hair, yep. like <laughs> nothing genetically like you wrong that yeah. we know of at least like they were like no so sorry picky. you don't have a college degree yeah and even very, with that uh, they, the there's process. no shortage like the yeah. eggs are what's juicy and expensive yes sperm is cheap but also fucking 17 minutes later you're jacking a cup like yeah. listen to all the shit that you you're like you can't diddle for a yeah. month yeah mm-hmm. it, it's way more intense on the, the ovaries yeah. and the yeah. vulva owners so uh yeah he came in and just in a cup so his sperm is already on He's ice done. ready to go <laughs> Basically, all we're waiting for is for my period to come back. Right. And um, you basically have to get legal paperwork signed saying like, if I die, what happens to the embryos? Yeah, that makes sense. It's like it, part yeah. of your will essentially. And I said, my sister can have them if mm-hmm. she wants them because she's single and 35. And uh, if she doesn't want them, Mikey can have them, my baby daddy. If he doesn't want them, donate them to science. Wow. Because I still think it would be cool to use them. And like, they might not even, like if you donate them, they could just be like, ah, these smell funny and throw them away. <laughs> you know, like, you'll never know. So uh, just waiting on the legal paperwork and then we'll do another round. And then that's what I'm really excited about because then that's when you get to go like, oh, what do you have? Like, how many do you have on ice? Mm-hmm. Like, I got a boy and two girls, like whatever gender's yeah. construct, but you have to get um, genetically tested yeah, to right. make sure that you I, and your partner don't have the same genetic mutation. But mm-hmm. also I saw that you tested positive for, for having albino. the albinoism, yes. which the way I, my family was all just like, yeah, that checks out hundred percent. I am. They didn't know? No. Oh. I am the palest, most Irish person. But is there anyone in your family that actually has no. like true al- albinism? No. Albinism? Yeah. None. No. Wow. And I was like, look at me go. Isn't that so interesting? Yeah. It, well, just all the genetic markers that they test for. Is, yeah. And there's only a certain amount that is like worrisome for them where right. they're like, we won't actually use these eggs yes. if they have yes. them. Right. But just like what could go wrong. It's a miracle that any of us are alive and functioning. Literally. Absolutely. Like we really are a fucking miracle. Yeah. Before there was pain, there was a miracle. Let me just say that. Yeah. Out of 10, how how hard was the whole process, do you think? The actual process itself, I would say is a six Mm -hmm. only because of the time of like, I had to get out of work to go drive across town. I had to go pick it up from the far. It was more like the labor, Mm -hmm. (laughs) no pun intended, (laughs) of getting the things done. Right. I see. The actual, like if we're just talking about procedure and eggies. Three. Oh yeah, that that part and not, like medicine. Like, three. Side yeah, effects. it was. Oh. I did not have nearly mm. the shit that people Some were talking people about. Yeah, I like I said, I did have more of the come down afterwards. Okay, and feeling just like a, like cry, like very PMSy, like emotionally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that also could have been because my relationship was falling apart. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would do it again, no problem. I just I wanted to take this break mm-hmm. in between because yeah. I was like, 
anything can affect the outcome of your and quality of your After eggs. breakup boot camp, you've got 35 eggs. Ah, I go back and they're like, we, there's so many in here. We need a fucking snowblower. <laughs> like I'm rejuvenated. It's I'm calling that in manifesting. Yeah. Kinda. Yeah. Are you guys thinking about it? Mm, I am. You're thinking about <gasps> it. Yeah, I really am. Yeah. You're so, you're young. You should do it while your quality <laughs> is good. Yeah, the, I, well, because I just feel like we're so emotionally far from both like being in a place where we feel 110% ready to have a kid. And I know everyone's always like, well, you never feel ready. You're never gonna actually be ready. But like, even like before we get to that limit, like I know that we're just not there yet. Yeah. And so I would love maybe like in the year after the wedding yeah. doing it. But now I'm like, oh fuck, I hate that I have to get off birth. I've been on birth control since I was 16. Oh dude. Yeah. Like I just think Who about knows the what's gonna impacts come out. of my, I'm like, am I even gonna be the same person? Um, yeah, you will. Let's manifest, yes, that it's not going to affect you at all. Like I'm like, fuck, this is going to be crazy. Are you on a low estrogen pill? I'm on um, I'm on the uh, Nuvering. Oh yeah, oh, that'll yeah. be fine. Yeah, because I mean, and that's why I chose it because it's like a slow release type yeah, of situation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I just like I feel like my skin has been so like stable. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. moods are quite stable. I love controlling when I get my yeah. period, and I'm like, oh my god, I haven't had like a non birth control period in so long that yeah. I don't even know what it's going to be like. I you, like. You have to go to my place to do it. Oh, for sure. I mean, well, because also I like loved your friend that was oh, right. a yeah. part of it. Yeah, yeah. So you have because they they take care of you like that. Like they will do stay on the phone need. with you. They'll talk to you about the skin stuff, like give you things, like recommend, like they go top to bottom because right. you are affected top to bottom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maggie, how does this like all get impacted by having PCOS? Right. So mm. that's kind of like the only reason that I was thinking about doing it, but we're so close to having kids that I almost mm. feel s- silly. Yeah. yeah. But then there's also a part of me where I like my nurse brain turns on and I'm like, oh no, I have PCOS and I also have a prolactinoma, which- That's uh, a big word for Elmo. I know. It's it's basically <laughs> a tiny, tiny, <laughs> a tiny, tiny little tumor um, <gasps> on my pituitary gland. That's right. Yeah. So there's like two that's what it was little called. hormonal things. So that's why I like, I just, my acne is always flaring and like, Fun stuff always that happens. That is so rude. I know. So that rude. is so fucking rude. Something so yeah. tiny. Yeah, that is so rude. Fuck so you. You really don't know how that's going to play out until you try. Yeah, but right. you know what everyone and said? They were also like, by the way, when you get pregnant, your basically estrogen will increase. Yeah. And estrogen actually can fuel the size of that oh, prolactinoma shit. growing. Oh my God. And I'm like, Okay, so we treated it for two years. It didn't yeah. shrink. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm still kind of on it until, but then I don't love being told like, we just are going to watch. That's not super reassuring. Would you do a, could yeah. you do a surrogacy? Would you ever consider it? I mean. Right, so an option could be that you do IVF <laughs> and let's do a be real, surrogacy. That's probably what I would do. I feel like I was talking, one of my friends, is a friend's father is a perinatologist and he's like, I've had patients that like, completely do fine with it. You really don't know until you try. Oh, but that's still so but scary. But I don't like those yeah. cards. And it's yeah. a tumor something that would be scary if it got bigger? It would just, it could press on your optic nerve. It, like if it could were to get, get bigger, and then you'd have to get it taken out. Well, then we and just take it, do, sucker that trend. thing out. Yeah, but that's Wait. still scary though. Oh, that's like, still scary. Yeah, that's still scary. But like my TikTok feed plus that on like all the things that can go wrong. Yeah. It's like, yeah. it's not good for my anxiety. So that's like, yeah. Kind of the reason why I was like, maybe I should just have like an emergency stash just in case. I don't know if it's going to be hard to get pregnant at all. So well, maybe I, I should have these. You, you're going to try. And yeah. if it doesn't happen when you try, that's when you reevaluate. Because right. uh, the thing I was going to say was everyone keeps telling me like, it doesn't fucking matter how many eggs you get. It doesn't matter how many no. fucking embryos you make because it takes one. Right. It just takes one. Like yeah. it just takes yeah. one. As long as you are producing eggs and the person you want to make them with mm-hmm. is producing sperm, right. it just takes one. And then like, if you get a reserve backup thing thing, then you do a circuit. Like yeah. there's so many ways to make it happen. Also like doing And we have like form. a little bit of time. So yeah. I'm like, yeah. if it's you have not so working, much time, yeah. then- Go to break a boot camp. <laughs> you okay, you okay. Okay, hang, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Hang on. No, just for funsies. We're oh, breaking oh, oh, oh. No, 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 just for funsies, get your egg count high. Oh, oh yeah, I forgot that's a new side effect <laughs> yeah, yeah, of breaking yeah, yeah. boot camp is yes. your eggs get incredibly high. Yeah, very yeah, yeah. roided eggs. I feel like also too, and again, I don't have the brain of any science, anything. I barely made it through by 10th grade biology. Um, but like doing four weeks of hormones is probably lower risk than being pregnant oh. for nine months. Well, I don't even think that the 
medicine that you have to take. It's not before egg yeah. isn't estrogen. Oh, so, so that yeah. even that, so that even so is that an would option. be an option. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really oh, okay. only like seven to twelve days. You're not on meds yeah. for a month. Oh, yeah. you're not doing it for. Oh, no, you're just doing the shot. I yeah. saw when you yeah. were injecting in like a public bathroom stall. Yes. I was like, that is the most Kelsey thing I've ever seen. Lana Del Rey concert <laughs> in the middle of the woods. Yes, that is correct. And I was like, fuck. And that's the other thing. You cannot fuck it up. If you fuck up, if you miss a shot, you have to be precise on time. Right. There's this oh. thing called the trigger shot, which is like the night before the surgery mm. that fucking makes your shit just go. <laughs> and it's like, if you fuck it up at all, if you get, if you fuck and you lose your eggs, like yeah. you, you've trashed 10 K. Oh, like fuck. It, that's the other thing is like, I wish I would have been in town because trying to navigate, like going to my check-ins and things right, like that. Like, right, was just be chilling, y'all. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. No, no. I'm seriously considering doing it. I feel like just the peace of mind afterwards is like yeah. something nice if to you have. Can yeah, do it. Okay, before this ends up being a three-hour-long podcast, oh God, we, we have to go. We'll take we'll a couple of questions uh, from the audience. I was like, we're doing a girly hang tonight. I was like, send us oh! questions. Oh, oh my god. god. Oh my god. Zach. Oh my God. Okay. The first what? question comes from Maggie's is husband, Corn of the Diddy. This is fucked uh, up. We're not, we're going to address that this happened, but we're not going to answer the question okay. because Zach, go absolutely fuck yourself. Yeah. <laughs> he said, fuck, fuck Mary kill. kill. Moose, Hippo, or Bowie? Also, where the fuck is Diggy in this? <laughs> well, well, bigger I fuck you, Zach. <laughs> Corn Diddy's still operating on that 2019 line. What could a fuck, Mary kill? What's the last one? Cuddle. Fuck, Mary kill, cuddle. Oh yeah, you're right. I refuse. Yeah. Zach, That's this is, hilarious. you're you're getting, you're getting the boot from cutie cuties yeah. for this, Bye. honestly. Uh, this oh, is so funny because we basically give, we just gave you so many options accidentally. No, but like question. the worst part about birth control is because I was on the, um, what's the little matchstick one that goes into your arm? Absolutely not. Nexaplan. The Nexaplan. The Nexaplan. Yes. Oh my God. I was on the Nexaplan. So I was on, I took, birth, I took uh, the pill for a couple of years. Like that was like fine. Then I heard about the Nuvering and I was like, oh, it was amazing. I was on the Nuvering for years. Had a friend who was on Nexaplan being like, oh my God, I love it so much. And I was like, oh, okay. Like whatever. I'm down to try ruined my life. Yeah, I mm. cannot believe you did that. It was awful. And the worst part is that because it's such a slow process of your body adjusting <laughs> and readjusting, well, I can't even think about it. like getting it taken out and going <laughs> back on the Nuvering, it still took me like six to nine months for my hormones to resettle back into like the proper balance of what it was on the Nuvering that worked so well for me. So I think my biggest fucking tip, if it ain't broke, don't fucking fix it. The question yeah. by the way was tips for figuring out birth control. That's my thing. If it ain't broke, don't fucking fix it. Yeah, so we it's gave not you so working many for good you. options. Yeah. Come sponge. What is the best way to take out a dry tampon? TMI, I know, but I need this info. Call I me go, crazy. Three, two, one, and go, <laughs> Yeah. Call me crazy. I hate store-bought pesto, but what other fucking way <laughs> is there to take out a tampon than a dry the tampon regular tampon. way? If you were to get in the tub, would it get easier? Oh, if Ooh, you do like a jacuzzi. Um, if you do like breaststroke, it gets water up there. <laughs> I did specific, swim. Specific. I like it. Yeah. I would recommend the bath. I'm going with bath. Yeah. Maybe just sit butterfly. Yeah. Ooh, oh, I have a really good tip for this one. Shaving, Shaving. the downstairs. Wait, also, up. this is like rapid fire. I love this. We're going to do more than three. I, well, I also <laughs> just saw what time it was. I was like, I got to go to bed. Um, <laughs> Shaving the downstairs. I follow this woman on TikTok. I think her name is literally called the Shaving Lady. Okay. Love and that. And she teaches you that vegetable, like a certain vegetable glycerin is made for skin care. Oh. And if you do it, mm. you eliminate razor burn. <gasps> eliminate. I highly recommend if if this is something that you're interested in, laser was the best thing that I ever did. Mm -hmm. My coochie has not seen a hair. I want to see One it. One hair. I did laser and it's just yeah, I thinner. did it and it's just, oh, it all came but, back. I mean, I'm half Asian as well too. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. minor. Yeah. Your and pussy the therefore is just, just better than ours. <laughs> Do we or do we not use lady wash? You hear so many mixed opinions. What are I your do takes? Not. No, but fucks Kelsey with your Kelsey literally could sniff a sugar cookie and get a yeast infection. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear the huge debate on TikTok and Twitter about condoms causing chronic yes. yeast oh, infections? I yes. I'm so glad you did. Yeah. Um, so the answer is no, don't use lady don't wash. Don't use lady no, wash. No, don't no, do no, that. It no, fucks no, with no. your pH and yeah. it's a marketing yeah. capitalistic yes. scam yes. made by yes, men. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, where do you get tested for sex diseases? <laughs> I um, love the phrasing of also, this. Also, we call it STIs because they are sexually transmitted infections. They're not mm -hmm. diseases. Diseases are long-term and what's technically like with- Chronic. Chronic. chronic? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
So we, that's why we say STIs now. Mm. It also helps destigmatize it a little bit. Yeah. Um, I know in LA, maybe we're in a bubble, but there's so many STD clinics that's like walk-in shops. Like they're like as many yeah. subways as we have. There I think clinics, um, you can go to your primary care provider too and just ask them caregiver. if you can get one, they'd be thrilled. I think also every time I go to the gyno as well too, they they test. Mm -hmm. Even though you're not sleeping with other people? He, yeah. No, maybe I got a full panel of blood work done. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Maybe do, that's definitely what it was. Always do blood panels every year if you're not anyways. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. How to keep things spicy after dating for so long. One of like the big things that I feel like Jeremy and I, like we were all on the same page, like couple therapists and Jeremy and I is like, even if it feels unsexy to schedule mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. intimacy, it is so fucking important. Even if you just do something that is intimate and doesn't lead to like sex mm -hmm. or doing a specific like hookup or anything, mm -hmm. like having those moments on your calendar and obviously mm -hmm. things come up and they don't end up like executing or whatever, but like, it might not sound sexy, but scheduling that shit is so key to like making sure you make time for it. Mm -hmm. Hey, motherfucking men. Mm -hmm. That's my exact. Men. That's my exact advice. Do you feel the societal pressures <laughs> as a woman to have kids soon? That's funny because oh you just talked about absolutely, it. absolutely. Mm -hmm. I don't think I. I. I think I've put it out there enough that people don't bother me. No, no. People are like, wait, you're you are are so what are you confused. doing with them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, people are like, wow, I didn't know. Congratulations. Yeah. I was like, no, guys, this is, nope, it's just an insurance plan. I like love though your kind of intro into being like, you mm. know what, like I said that I would never do this. Yep. And then look at now I'm this type of person. Yep. And so like, I think that it's it's such a great, if there's one thing that is certain, it is change will happen. Mm. It yeah. is inevitable. And maybe that might be our opinions on kids one day. Mm -hmm. How do you feel? Oh my God. How do you deal with body <laughs> dysmorphia? Mm. If anyone knows, let me know. <laughs> I am, Ugh. I have, I have pretty intense body dysmorphia. I'd mirror say. mantras have been good for me. Like, mirror mantras? Like putting, writing it on my mirrors. This is more specific to, I feel like our industry and like what we do as careers, but I think seeing yourself on camera and from so many different angles in both video and photo, <laughs> things that have been retouched, things that haven't been retouched. It's, I always say this to Jeremy, I'm like, I don't know what I look like. I am so glad you said that. Cause I was like, if she doesn't say, I don't know what I look like, because I feel the exact same I way. I don't know like, what I look like. Am I a fucking Picasso painting like molded together or am I a human? Cause sometimes I'm like, that doesn't look like a face. Yeah. yeah. We just yeah. look at it too much. Or like sometimes, cause I, I've seen my body from so many weird different angles because of our job. I'm just like, oh God. I would say yeah, like, I feel, I feel so get in the habit of posting whatever makes you happy. Yeah. I feel like we're so conditioned to, we have to post pictures of our bodies like in a swimsuit yeah. or like in sexy photos. And yeah. it's like, or why don't you get used to posting things that just make you feel good? Maybe it's a, a fucking photo dump of like your dogs. I think one of my biggest things too was that I feel like I held on to old clothes that didn't fit anymore. Mm. Cause I was like, oh, I'll be this weight again or I'll be mm -hmm. this skinny so again. let me hold on to this. And, and let me hold on to this. And it was like kind of like creating trauma in myself, I feel like. Yeah. And so I feel like just like accepting that your body is going to change, I think mm -hmm. is a is a good, like again, change is inevitable. And mm -hmm. practicing body neutrality is like the new body positivity. Body neutrality is one of my favorite fucking mm -hmm. things ever. Mm -hmm. my favorite fucking things. Go follow that on TikTok and you'll just start seeing it more often. Yeah, I totally yeah. agree. Is it weird to not, oh, Kelsey, you can take this one in here. Kelsey, you read, read this question. Uh, this uh, is it you. weird to not like getting eaten out? Boy, <laughs> do I have news for you guys. <laughs> I hate it. I did not care to, be, it did nothing for me for the longest time. I was not a fan. If, when people go down on me, I'd be like, all right, go for it. I mean, I'll, I'll. it's not like I didn't like it. I was yeah. just like, go for it. I, was it because if you a, were- If a guy ever said, go for it. Oh! I'm sure they're just like, like, oh. No, I tell them, I'm like, yeah. hey, just before you go down there, I just want you to know I'm not gonna get off this way. I've never had orgasms that mm. way. It's just not in my nature. The Canadian that I'm talking about, is the first time I have like consistently orgasmed from being eaten out. And it took me till 33 years old, you guys. Wow. So you might not like it right now. You mm -hmm. might need to find your Australian slash Canadian. Yeah. yeah. I think also the main thing is just feeling comfortable. I feel like a lot of people don't enjoy it because they can't get out of their head. Mm. And like, that's something for me. Like if I'm not like freshly showered and like squeaky clean, like I would I be the same I just way. Your pussy like, ur -ee, ur -ee, ur -ee. oh, a fucking sparkle is coming off of it. Yeah. Literally, that is how clean I am. But like, I, I won't be able if to get I out of my like head. If I have like an ounce of like little body odor, I'm like, I 
Just what? Need to... And y'all have been with your partner for years. Yeah. But it's not but about it's, them. It's a sensory it's about thing me. for me. Yeah, same. Uh, it's see, about I'm me. Like, give me that sweaty fucking after exercise dick. Oh, uh, I don't know if that's where we <laughs> Different strokes. Different strokes. Uh, different folks. Different folks. Next one is the last one. Okay. Mm. Okay. Have you ever ended a relationship because of bad sex? Kelsey? Ooh. Over to you. <laughs> Over to you. I have not started a relationship because of bad sex, which I feel like is the same thing, mm. which is why I think it's so fucking important to be realistic about how much sex means to you. And yes, 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 yes. I yes. would say, have you ever ended a relationship because of bad sex? Consider talking to them about being, are they open-minded enough to consider growth in the sex? Hmm. If you're like, oh, that right. first time was bad, most first times are not great. Yeah. So if you're like consistent, you're in a long-term partnership and it's still bad and you feel comfortable to be like, hey, would you be open-minded enough to try Tantra? Like mm -hmm. that's often been a thing that has changed people's connection during sex or like, hey, would you want to go to like a strip club, something less high stakes, like something fun and silly about sex? If they are closed-minded about the sex being bad, and growth, it. yeah, no growth, mm -hmm. yeah. no growth, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Yep. get like Jeremy and grow. <laughs> Put your whole Jeremy Mussy into it, okay? <laughs> That's in the best part of this podcast. Hundred <laughs> percent, yeah. Jeremy Mussy. Yeah. Um, well, on that note, thank you both so much for coming. I best love girls night. girly pop. Me too. We haven't had a catch up like this in I so long. Know. So this filled my soul. My eggs are like vibrating out of my body. Know, this so bitch happy. got more eggs to boba out. <laughs> she gotta go. Yo, I'm a chicken. Call me a rooster. I'm ready. Who lays the eggs? I don't know. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. And go tell Jeremy that we appreciate his Jeremy. <gasps> Goodbye, Later, Jeremy. Bye. 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 Bye.